Welcome back to Plan B, my name is Ethan. Today I'll be dispelling some myths about perfect pitch and hopefully showing you how you might be able to teach it to yourself. Let's roll the intro. All right, hey, hope everyone is doing okay and staying healthy this weekend, unlike me. I had some plans to include some live singing in this episode, which had to be scrapped Saturday when I woke up with, you can probably tell, a cold and no singing voice. I really cannot hold a single note right now, so instead today I'm gonna to talk about one of my musical pet peeves, the dialogue around perfect pitch. Just to be clear about definitions here, when I'm talking about perfect pitch or absolute pitch, I mean the skill to identify and reproduce specific musical notes from memory without prompting or a reference tone. People with good perfect pitch can hear this iPhone alarm and say, oh, that's a sort of out of tune F sharp and also give very accurate responses when asked to sing a note like C. It's a helpful skill for musicians, although it's not necessary to have it. With it, you might be able to tune up a guitar more quickly or start singing a song in a chorus without a pitch pipe or a tuning fork. Here's my pet peeve. A very persistent and popular idea often asserted without good evidence is that perfect pitch is this incredibly rare innate ability. News articles and an embarrassingly high proportion of musicians themselves will readily tell you that only one in 10,000 people out of the general population has this unique ability. It must be totally genetic because it's been observed to run in families and correlation and causation are absolutely the same thing. With all due respect to everyone saying this stuff, to me it is complete nonsense. Why? Three reasons. First of all, there is no high quality source at all for that one in 10,000 figure it may well be completely made up. Secondly, I have perfect pitch right now, but I didn't have it until I taught it to myself at the age of 16. And most importantly, I think that when people talk about this, they're confusing acquired skills with innate abilities. The Western tuning system is neither written into the laws of physics nor into our genes. Plenty of other tuning systems exist all around the world with wildly different numbers of scale degrees, pitch classes, and modes. Obviously, no one can be born predisposed to 12-tone equal temperament. And you have to be exposed to quite a lot of music and musical lessons as a kid to pick this sort of thing up at an early age and have the quick recall that constitutes perfect pitch. This is obviously something that not everyone has equal access to. In my sophomore year at Harvard College, if I recall correctly, eight out of 12 members of my acapella group had some form of perfect pitch, myself included. Given that they don't select for perfect pitch in college applications, and that, I don't know if you've heard this before, but Harvard skews pretty rich, this illustrated to me that the prevalence of perfect pitch in a space has a lot to do with the resources available to people within it. Well, okay, but there's gotta be some kind of innate ability behind perfect pitch, right? Well, sure. It's called pitch memory or tonal memory, the ability to perceive a musical tone in your head without hearing it played to you first. The rest of the skill is just assigning names to these tones, and that part is very easy mental labeling. This pitch I remember is C, this other pitch is D, and so on and so forth. Thus, the ability to learn perfect pitch is pretty much only limited to whether one has good pitch memory. And guess what? It turns out that adults in the general population have way better pitch recall than you might expect. Here are a few scientific articles I'm gonna display on screen supporting the idea that while the exact prevalence in the global population is not really known, many, many more than one in 10,000 people have the ability to remember musical pitches that are played for them repeatedly. The best known researcher in this field is a man named Daniel Levitin, whose 1994 paper on the abilities of Stanford University students to sing songs accurately from memory shook up conventional wisdom on this so much that the term Levitin effect was actually coined to describe this phenomenon. So where am I going with all this? Well, I think you might be able to learn perfect pitch as an adult even if you don't have it right now. I'm gonna show you how I learned it at 16 when I had a sort of realization that all I was missing was note names. Are you ready? Okay, here goes. I want you to take a moment to imagine your favorite song. This should be something you've heard a hundred times before. You instantly recognize it when it comes on the radio. Go ahead and really imagine it playing in your head and then sing the first few notes of it. Now, pause this video, find that song on YouTube or Spotify or whatever, and compare what you're hearing with what you just sang. Were you right on with the pitch? If so, congrats. You have very good pitch memory, which as we've established is just one very short step away from perfect pitch. If not, there's still pretty good evidence that pitch memory can be trained through repetition too. Once you have a musical pitch within a melody that you can pretty reliably reproduce, all you need to do is then go over to a piano or a piano app on your phone and find the name of that note. Now just practice singing it and testing yourself again and again. Repeat the process for multiple pitches and there you go you have absolute pitch. Will it be as fast and reliable as the perfect pitch of someone who's been playing the violin since the age of three? Probably not, 
but I'd argue that their ability is no more innate than yours, just a little bit more automatic. They learned it younger, and as with languages, this is a little harder, but not impossible to learn as an adult. Again, I am living proof of this, and I am not that special. In high school, I used the song Come On, Feel the Illinois by Sufjan Stevens, which starts out like this. To learn the note C, Africa by Toto. Gonna take a lot to drag me away from you to learn the note A, and from there the rest came pretty easily. In a college course once, my abilities were tested alongside people with supposedly innate perfect pitch since childhood. My recall was a little bit slower, but the accuracy was indistinguishable from the other subjects in the study. Now, as I've said before in this video, perfect pitch is a completely non-essential talent for almost anybody to have. For most musicians, it is a nice convenience, an impressive party trick maybe, but not much more than that. But to me, this speaks to a much larger point. We often think that society is a lot more meritocratic than it actually is. The people at the very tops of their fields must be geniuses without exception, destined to greatness from birth. Every impressive skill gets mythologized into an innate and heritable ability. One in 10,000, one in a million. The truth, of course, is a lot more complex. What we see as exceptional natural talent is often more due to someone's education and access to resources from a young age than any one gene they possess that everyone else does not. And I don't know about you, but I view this as good news. This means that it's probably not too late to challenge the status quo and try something that looks or seems impossible. I mean, that's why I'm pursuing music seriously right now. So I hope that you can go out there today and find your personal perfect pitch. You don't need permission to prove the naysayers wrong. Just go for it. If you want to see more from me and hear my music, please subscribe or follow this channel. And don't forget to leave a comment if there's anything you'd like me to talk about in a future video. I do take requests. Thank you for watching. Please stay healthy unlike me and catch you next week.